Good, good evening, good morning for me. Another day, another practice. Um, Minister Ben Chavis, who's my mentor, used to say, today is the day the Lord has made. Let us be grateful. That was his, every day I would say it because I got it from him and he was my mentor. And today, like every day, we have to practice gratefulness despite what we perceive as struggle. We talk about struggle. We have to put it in context. When we talk about suffering and struggle and our own problems, put them in context. By calling or pointing to other people's suffering, it doesn't relieve your suffering. But we have to understand as the watcher, the yogi is the watcher. He realizes that his body or her body is a, a tool, the mind and the body. We are not our minds nor our body, but we are the watchers. And the Holy Spirit, the eyes behind the eyes never change. And the more we come to God or come to this realization that we are the spirit, that the body and the mind are tools, the more free we are. So when we watch the suffering of others, we realize that those are the shells and people suffer. And that's our, many times, it, it's our salvation. Like we, and we, we say, oh, this woman, this whole community is starving. 65, 85,000 people per day starve. This woman wakes up every morning and goes to try to find food for her child so the child doesn't starve. And then at the end, when she finds the food, she sleeps grateful. She's grateful. But she has faced, she's faced with that same situation every day. But she, in her situation, accepts that that is her life. And that's, she's grateful. And if I hold your breath, and you get one breath, gratefulness. I say this to you because it's all relative. And here we are, and it, although the world is you know, not supposed to um, dictate our happiness or unhappiness, here we are suffering and asking, why us? Why not us? God gives us struggle so we can have a disposition about God. So that we can see God in all things, not just in the way we would like the world to be. Seeing God in a corpse and a sunset is the ultimate goal. Because as the watchers, we are not affected either way. So we move towards God through struggle. We learn to be comfortable in difficult positions. So ease, when it sets in, those positions become beautiful. And that's why we do this physical practice, so that we can sit and be comfortable and that we can accept struggle as our teacher and as our blessing. I always say practice loving everything and everybody all the time. So how the fuck, how, how's that? Everything and everybody all the time. Now, we want to hang in places and with people that lift us up, but we have to love it all. And that's a tough one, but it's certainly a goal. And if we have that as a goal, and if we realize that this is the way out of suffering, then we'll practice it more often. All right, so we begin our practice with a breathing exercise. And it's where we put our fingers together, put our fists together, and we close our elbows as much as we can, and we open them as we open our lungs, a deep breath to the count of six. Let me give you an example. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then you push out. One, two, three. The slower the better, and the deeper the breath, the better. If we're really lucky, we'll get high. Me as an ex-druggie, I'm always looking to get high. They say yoga or enlightenment is through clarity or cloudiness, the feelings of enlightenment, the experiences, the presence when the mind is empty comes through cloudiness or clarity. We're seeking clarity uh, so we can see all of the miracles all the time. And that's the, this state of needing nothing or enlightenment that we're, we're trying to get to. So the physical practice sets us up, sets us up for the seat, which again is life's goal, a comfortable seat 
and a state of needing nothing. Um, and then when we operate from a place of needing nothing, that suffering we talked about, that question, why me? It's just a movie. The yogi is a watcher, and the movie is ongoing, and he just smiles and watches the movie and does it what God instructs he or her to do in playing his or her role. Okay, here we go. <sighs> Count of six. Ujjayi breathing. Each breath deeper than one before. All the way up. <sighs> the reason I'm asking, talking about gratefulness and asking you to be grateful the last phone call I received was someone crying about their condition. And I tried to tell them how relative it was and how it had nothing to do with their happiness. They started yelling at me. It's easy for you to say that, Russell. You're in Bali. And I considered it. Then I had to consider the woman who had to wake up every day and feed her child. The men in the shanty houses who have families to feed and who are grateful. I said, well, it's easy for you to say it too. Deep, 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 deep breath. But in the end, your condition, your surroundings, and your level of wealth are not the source of your happiness. Your happiness is from the inside. The present moment is a great equalizer. Okay, you should feel a little bit dizzy. If you don't, in this second set, make sure you do. Get ready? Second set. Sucking your stomach up and in as you push out and as you go in. It's not only a breathing exercise, you're tightening as you do in mountain pose. All 14 parts of the body are engaged in this exercise. The mountain pose where the way the standing, the Mulandara, Uriyana Bandha, Mulandara Bandha, Mula Bandha, Uriyana Bandha, and Jalanda, all of this is locked and up and in. And the void. So, so the Bandhas are locked as you push out. Inhale. The 
Mulandara bundles where you tighten in your anus and you, all of this gets up and in, the energy. And then the Uddiyana Bandha comes in, sucks it even more and locks it. These are locks. And then the Jaladhar, the throat lock. So when you're doing this, everything is engaged. And if you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, good. You'll get it. Those who practice the asana or the physical practice of yoga, they know that you never get a pose right unless you become a ball of light, it says in scripture. So always we're refining the pose. When you get one pose right, boom, enlightenment. <laughs> so we keep refining it every day. It's why we have set sequences in some cases so that we can keep working on the pose. There's so much to learn, infinite amount of things to learn about the pose. It says in the Hatha Yoga Padipika, one pose, hands all the way up, straightening your arms, getting as tall as you can, and going from the right to the left, side to side. Chris Spence, are you really on here? I spoke to a friend, a very talented writer. He reminded me, like, who might watch this? Who might practice this? Family like that, beautiful family. Okay, straight up, as tall as you can get, all the way up. Your ears are being squeezed by your arms, and then you all the way to the right, equal balance, pushing your right hip in, left hip out, deep breath. Straightening your arms, straightening your legs. Deep breath. Straighten and bend and bend. Come on up. Okay, as tall as you can be again. Over to the other side. Okay, now we're going to go into a back bend. So you see straight, you're on your heels and you're, all of this is in Tadasana, up and in. Yeah. Stomach is in, chest is open between your, your shoulders. And you just lean back your head, and relax, and then it'll go all the way back. As far as you can, doesn't matter how far, but you're opening up your chest. They say the spine is you. It's so we go forwards and backwards and sideways to lengthen and strengthen and to make a flexible spine. time and gently come forward. This is your first back bend, the forward bend, so really slow, relax as you bend forward, hang forward. And when you're ready, well hang forward, take your time. When you're ready, put your hands under the back of your feet, bend your knees, 
much as you can or I mean need to. Then just put your chest on your knee. And then if you feel like it, try to straighten your leg. Pulling and stretching. Your arms are pulling as hard as you can. Straighten your legs, straighten your knees, lock your knees. Come on up. That's another set, same thing. If you're like me, you're a little bit high already. That's good news. But awake, present. Hands up, up, and over to the right again. Straightening your arms, locking your knees. Bundas up and in. Put on a smile. Up, lock your arms straight. Chest feels like it's going up between your shoulders. Chest is up. A little bit of a back bend and over to your left. beautiful family that I spoke to, he was telling me what shows to watch on Netflix. <laughs> we have all these tools to occupy our time when we're away from them. We get to be creative and go in. We have more time to go in and see what really matters. This cannot come from the TV only self-reflection. Yogis say that there's no goal in life except self-knowledge. Because when you know the self, they say you know God. The God inside you is blissful all the time. Okay, second back bend. Blissful all the time. Now, how does that sound? Those who are fully present never suffer. If they cut your arm off right now, and you looked at the arm on the floor and at your arm, and you were fully present, you'd be like, oh shit, my arm's cut off. This is the awakened state. Fully present, no suffering. State known as God consciousness, Christ consciousness, Nirvana. The yogis refer to Samadhi. Basketball call, players call it being in the zone. Right? Well, the world is moving in slow motion. And we are wide awake and we see it all in real time. Not the flickering of the mind, but instead the stillness that we operate from. God's presence. Uh, it's a lot of rap, but you've had the experience. Maybe it's a car accident where the world moves so slow you are stuck in the present moment. Second set. Standing on your fingers, fingers are pointing forward. Bend your knees, put your chest on your knees and pull. And if you get the inkling, straighten your knees.
and pull. Come on up. Okay, we go into Uttanasana now, chair pose. I'm going to do the other chair, the one that comes out of the vinyasa practice as opposed to from the Bikram practice. So bend your knees, lock your knees against each other, squeeze them, put your gut up and in, your mulandara bunda up and in. Straightening your arms, your chest is up in between your arms. I'm going to breathe. Come on up. I'm going to do the other chair. Straighten your arms. Straight. Come on down, butt back, chest forward, kind of a back bend, hold, deep breath. Now, get on your tippy toes, high as you can go, come on down again. This time you feel a little additional pressure on the belly to go up and in. And your thighs are, well, get a little bit of fire up in them thighs if you're on your tippy toes and sucking your stomach up and in. Toes up, come on down, come on up. Third, these poses up on your toes but not as high. Knees together and tight. Come down very slowly. Squeezing your knees together. Coming down a wall. Straighten your arms, shoulders back, knees squeezing together and pointed down so that they're flat. Oh, I'm sorry, level to the floor, the legs and knees. And then come back up slowly as you went down. Okay. Next thing, we're going to do an eagle pose. An eagle pose, you can do like this and squeeze. And then bend your legs like this and bend. That's an eagle pose. That's a proper eagle pose. Or the full expression, which actually you'll catch on pretty quick if you do this a little bit. And that's when you put your arm fully under, which you can do that too. And wrap it, double wrap it. Then come down, lift your right leg, wrap it all the way around your left. And squeeze everything together, straight up. Not a back bend, but you're straight bending your left knees so you can go down low. Having your gut up and in and squeezing everything together like tight like ropes. And you feel it all your whole body till it starts to burn. You're squeezing as tight as you can. Come on up. Repeat that on the other side. Again, you don't have to do the full expression. All well, my beginners just squeezing. Left arm under the right, same way. Bend knees deep. Lift your left leg up. Wrap it all the way around. Squeezing everything together.
squeezing is tight. Your gut should be feeling this like it's an exercise for the gut alone. Your arms, your legs squeezing. Good for digestion, good for circulation. Come on up. We do two sets of this. Deep inhale, pull it in, exhale. Same thing. Again, any alternative is good. People say, why do you teach? I'm not a teacher. I teach scripture, teach yogic science, but physical, the asana practice. Never was a teacher of the asana. But I've done these sequences enough that I know them. Over the last 20 some odd years, I get to remember some of the instructions. But anyway, we're holding this pose, we're smiling, we're squeezing everything together, we're acting, activating all 14 parts of the body. Most important thing is the deep breath and the smile. Come on up. Other side. Shoulders back, up and around. Again, the asana practice is not even mentioned in the Yoga Sutras. Yoga Sutras is the science book for happiness or for yogic science which is the science of happiness. So the asana practice, squeeze everything together, is most recently added in the Hatha Yoga Padipika. There's mention of, in the Yoga Sutras of how each pose should be done, but no mention of the poses. And what it says is stiram sukham asana which translates the steady, joyful pose, that the, yoga, the yogi's pose or connection to Mother Earth should be steady and joyful. So the practice is to take these poses, and asana, which is the physical yoga practice, the asana practice. Asana means seat. So every pose, a seat. Now, where do we go from there? there we go. Oh. Now we go head to knee. Deep breath. Lay it out. Now, most of us can do, or some of us can just do this. Holding that pose like that. Then maybe bend over. And there's the gut and everything working. Others of us may bend over and hold our foot. That's also good. Straighten your left knee. And if your knee is totally straightened, then straighten your right knee. Right knee. Hold and breathe. breath is your soundtrack for this pose and this practice. If you could hear your breath breathing and ujjayi breathing, the sound of the breath going in and going out for just a class. If you could focus wholly on your breath, you would be enlightened by the end of the class. You'd be stuck in the present world and then you would never suffer. This idea of people say, cut your arm off, yeah. Oh shit, my arm. Because it's just a tool. And the Holy Spirit is the watcher. And all the other defense mechanisms that teach you to fear and worry and suffer are to protect the tool. But the Spirit never dies and doesn't suffer. 
Bend the left knee. Hold it. Foot. The right knee is straight. And straighten the left knee. Hold and breathe. Pull out, get right back in. Come on down. Okay. Now we go to dancing Shiva. Uh, Shiva is the destroyer of the old and helps for rebirth of the new. But dancing Shiva is the name of this pose for some reason. Open both hands. Hold on to your right foot. Put your knees together. When you bounce like that, if you are, lift your left hand up. Up, straight. Hinge forward. Kicking your right leg as hard as you can. Kicking and stretching equal and simultaneously. side. Holding your left foot, left hand. Straighten your right arm up. Come on down. Preparing for Warrior Three. Arms up. Right leg forward. Bend forward. Warrior three. Come on up. Hold the side. Left leg forward. Lean forward and gently and straight, come straight to a letter T. Hold it. Perfect. Okay. Now spread your legs. Open. And lean forward. Head to the floor. Hold on to your ankles or your heels. Pull your head down with a straight spine, though. Not a bent spine. A straight in your spine. Put your head towards the floor. Straightening your hamstrings. Your legs, you should feel it in your hamstrings. Pulling as hard as you can with your arms. Working your arms. Your gut is up and in. Most important thing is you smile and breathe. The practice is to smile and breathe in difficult poses. So when you get off the mat and the car horn blows, 
you can say, bitch, I just did a twisting tri triangle. In fact, let's do one. A twisting triangle. And your horn blowing will not destroy my peace. And in fact, I love you. And I hope you don't have to blow the horn for no good reason <laughs> at anybody else. This is the attitude of the yogi. Accept and love people where they are. And this way, you hate hurts the hater. <laughs> Suffering is self-imposed. And we shouldn't let others create our own suffering. Suffering. Um, it's best to love and accept each moment. It's easy to say. But if we can remember to remember what scripture is teaching us, more often, we're happier more often. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to be happy more often. So we're going to go into a series of triangles. Going through first, Siri Namaskar A, which is going to go into a Uttanasana. Then we're going to, from there, to back to a plank, to a Chaturanga, upward dog and downward dog. So, round all the way like a swan dive. Put your fingers equal, if you can, to your toes. 10 fingers and 10 toes all lined together. 20 toes, 20 fingers it looks like. Straighten your legs, look up. Step back with your right foot. And come down Chaturanga. Up with dog. Down with dog. Breathe. Forward. Now we're going to turn to the side to a warrior one. So we're going to bend our left knee all the way, lift our arms, level our hips, smile in the warrior one. Warrior two. Keep the smile. Straighten your left leg. Then go into a triangle. Opening your chest to the sky. You can put your hand on your shin as well, or higher up, whatever is easiest or doable. This is a, a stanga, not even a stanga, this is a Iyengar triangle. His alignment is most revered in the yoga practice. Stangis hold their toe, Jibamuktis hold their ankle, or the inside, I believe. But, it's, but Iyengar taught on the outside of the foot. Come on up. Other side. Hold the warrior one. Opening your chest between your arms, shoulders back, head up. This is from the chest up. Open the warrior two.
right in your right leg. Come on. Triangle, opening your chest, straightening your arms, using your core some. Now we're going to go to the other side, which is a, and we're going to use the traditional hot eight triangle. When we first go into warrior two, once we established warrior two, we charge, but we hold bent knees and we hold our hands off the floor. We don't touch anything. We use our core to hold us up. Side. Warrior two. Oh. Opening your hips with your elbow. Finger is meant to point between the first and second toe, but not to touch. Come on up. Let's take the time to open our hips. Let's do a crouch. And use your elbows to open your hips if you can get all the way down. Open them and straighten your chest up and straighten your back. your legs and then put your head on your knee if you can breathe put your hands on the right side on the left side of your left foot good if not Place it any way you can, even on your leg, and turn, and twist, opening your chest, twisting your spine, working your digestion. Other side, head on your knee. Now if you could open up, great. Open all the way up if you can. Feel it in your bunda. Your root chakra is awake and your back is twisting. From the stomach, it's like you're squeezing a sponge, opening up, getting out the toxins. Come on down and hang. Let your spine relax and hang. Now we're gonna do heads and knee pose. Last two standing poses. Open your left foot, point it directly forwards to the left, 90 degrees. For your right foot, 90 degrees. Straighten your left foot. 
all the way forward, bend forward. Put your head on your knee. side, balancing your hips, stomach up and in, all the way over, head on the knee, it's a compression pose, not a stretching pose only, mostly compression, so you can barely talk, but you're rounding your back, putting your head on your knee, if you have to bend your knee, get your head on it, that's okay probably do, I do. Come on up. Now going into tree pose. Simple basic tree. Your foot is below or above your ankle, not again, I mean your knee, not on your knee. It's dangerous, so put your foot above your knee or below it. Open your hip. Balance. Now you're doing more than balancing. There's a string pulling your head up to the sky, up and in, your bundas, chest is back and open and activate it. If you got all that right, put a prayer in there. And again, your, your foot is pushing hard into your left foot. Your right foot is pushing hard into your left thigh. Lifting up and out of your sacrum and out of your belly, up. You're smiling. <laughs> And the full expression, lifting your arms, if you can. Come on down. Other side. Now, if you can't get your foot over your knee, put it down here. Still, all the activation is the key, not the pose, not the, what you see on the physical on the outside, but what's going on in the inside is what matters. In almost every one of these poses, it's about what's happening inside, not what you see. So, okay, opening your hip all the way as much as you can, pushing your foot hard against your thigh, straightening everything up chest open, silly smile, prayer pose. Feel like you're growing. Hands up, as high as you can get them. Chest open, gut up and in. Come on down. First Shabasana. Lay on your back. Let me move this so you can see what we're doing here. Because we're on the rest of the pose practice is on our back, or on our on the floor, I should say. We begin with the first chavasana. We're just breathing. Five breaths.
จะบอกนะเ
Going up. Come forward on your knees. Now we're going to do some twisting poses. First, we're going to while we're in Japanese pose, seat, put our left knee, our left hand on our right knee and twist to the right, straightening the back, turning to the right, ringing open like a rag, all of the toxins. More, other side. Okay, I'm gonna do Automatsi and Drasana now. Just another twist, another twisting pose for your spine and your back. Now you can straighten your left leg and put your right leg over it like this and turn. Or you can bend your left leg like this and put your right foot over it the same way. And both butt cheeks have to be on the ground or go the other way. If you can't get both butt cheeks on the ground, go back the other way, it's safer. Lift your left arm up, turn, hold on to your right knee, put a grin on, wringing yourself out like a rag, smiling. I like to say, a yogi just smiles and breathes. This is the way out of the suffering. Full presence, awareness. I like to say stuck on stupid. Basketball players, you've been in the zone. Other athletes. Imagine stuck on stupid. Where you could always shoot like Reggie Miller. When he did his amazing work. Or you could always outrun your greatest um, achievements. And you're just happy and present and awake. That comes from the endorphins sometimes. Uh, wake you up um, It comes from various different things you get the feeling from drugs sometimes because the mind is empty The goal of the yogi is to have an empty mind When the mind is still the universe unravels All the instinct and intelligence is operational But the fear and the anxiety that separates us from God is gone That is Christ consciousness that is nirvana. That is taqwa for Muslims. That is uh, samadhi for yogis. This state of God consciousness. Come on back. Now we're going to finish out with a short shavasana going into a forward bend. Two deep breaths. Out through your mouth. Inhale. All the way to the top, let it out. Now we're going to do a, a, a kind of like a Bikram sit up. We're going to sit up really fast. <coughs> and we're going to do a forward bend. Bend forward, pulling our butt cheeks back all the way back. Pulling our butt cheeks forward.